Hi all. Our instructive game today will have the theme of the Determined Queen. To demonstrate this theme, I'm choosing the game Viktor Korshnoi vs. Mijo Yudovic, played in Leningrad 1967. Korshnoi playing white, played d4, and his opponent played e6, the French defence, or trying to transpose into the French defence. Korshnoi obliged by playing e4, and after d5, Korshnoi played the Tarash variation, so knight d2. After knight f6, Korshnoi played e5. After knight fd7, he now played c3, so he's reinforcing his d4 pawn. Black plays the usual standard undermining plan to try and put pressure on the d4 pawn. Now, after knight c6, Korshnoi plays bishop d3. So he, he already has in mind the idea of actually sacrificing a pawn now. That d pawn will just be sacrificed for a lead in development after he just castles. So black took that gambit pawn, so won a pawn here, after knight takes, queen takes, knight f3. So black is a pawn up, but after queen b6, white has a certain pressure in the position. Ribka actually likes white's position here and gives a small advantage to white. Cautionary now played a move Ribka doesn't even consider. He played queen a4. I think one of the ideas is to try and play queen g4. But uh, black stops this immediately by playing queen b4. In terms of the central theme of the game, the determined queen, that wasn't the end of that attempt to come to the king side. Korshnoi just plays now queen c2. But after h6 is played, he now plays bishop d2, evicting that queen from b4. And again now trying to bring his queen to the king side. So he plays now queen actually he plays rook c1 first and now queen a4 again so this time black can't block the queen coming to the king side black now has um, two main choices according to Ribka, queen takes b2 might be playable but in the game the black queen humbly retreated back to d8 after rook c2 Korshner was able now also to just double rooks to have a, quite a bit of pressure on this c line so king f8 was played so why was king f8 played? Let's have a look at just castles. Would that have been too dangerous? Castles, queen g4, there would be the threat of bishop takes h6 here. And according to Ripka, actually white significantly uh, better. Say f5, queen g6, king h8. And here maybe white can carry on with even bishop takes h6. Let's have a look at this variation. So there's a draw here which can be secured. Or, Ripka thinks maybe rook c3 is dangerous. So queen e8, queen h6, bishop e2. And the, this rook potential to come to g3 is, is dangerous for black. So knight g5. And according to Ripka, actually black's getting busted here. It's uh, almost approaching 1.47 advantage. So anyway, that, that just demonstrates that in this position after rook c2, it might be dangerous for black to castle immediately. Black just played king f8 instead. But still, Korshnoi um, continued increasing the pressure. He played rook fc1, doubling up rooks. After knight b6, he transferred the queen to g4. So this determined queen is still putting pressure on black. So the pressure points these these two immediately. After bishop d7, now bishop a5 was played. So black's defensiveness uh, possibilities are being tied down here. That knight can't easily come back to, back to d7. After rook c8, Korshnoi was happy to exchange off a pair of rooks. But now he actually weakened black's dark squares. He played bishop b4, trying to exchange off that defensive bishop on the dark squares. Black further increased the weaknesses on the dark squares by playing this g6. So this f6 is potentially much weaker now. And Korshnoi... Um, intensified the pressure now by playing queen h4 so he's exploiting that pin on the bishop and maybe is threatening now queen f6 and then followed by bishop takes g6 so black played g5 here and this allowed Korshnoi now to play knight takes g5 after king e8 it would seem as though Korshnoi is in a difficult position here with this pin what is he going to do about it I'll give you um, five seconds now. After this bishop b5 check, bishop d7, can you spot the move that Korshnoi played here? Five seconds starting from now. 
Cautionary, to break this pin, played the brilliant move. Knight takes e6, temporarily offering his queen. Because if bishop takes h4, then knight g7 is mate. Because this bishop is stopping that king from, from escaping. So in this position, his opponent actually played f takes e6. And now we see the determined queen carry on attacking black's king. Queen h5 check. And after king f8, now Cautionary brought his rook into the attack with rook c3. So it comes the sight of the with threats like rook f3. After rook h7, instead of the immediate rook f3, which might be good, Cautionary plays an even stronger move. He stops first king g8. He plays queen g6. So it stops any king g8s from black, leaving the king trapped, waiting for that rook f3. Rook g7 was played, and now queen takes h6. And this is absolutely crushing now. Bishop takes b5, and now rook g3. And black is defenceless. Black resigns here. But let's say he continues with king e8. Then rook takes g7. Say king d7. It's all over. Just bishop takes e7. And black would have to give up the queen to stop further losses. And in this position, really, there's absolutely nothing black can do. Let's um, say knight c8, queen takes e6, and it's a mate in two. So, for example, queen b6, rook g8 mate. So let's have a look in overview and summary at this game. So it was a French defence, and Cautionary gambited his d-pawn for a lot of positional pressure, and his queen became very determined to attack the black kick king, so trying to get that queen g4 in, temporarily stopped, but then after bishop d2 he, he carried on with that idea again to play queen a4. And later now the queen came to g4 and Caution had great pressure now on the dark squares, which his opponent seemed to make things worse with this g6, especially after Caution on his queen h4. Threats included queen f6, and the king couldn't escape to g7 without losing the bishop. So black played g5. But after knight takes and king e8, now cautionary played bishop b5 check with this brilliant idea of knight takes e6. So ripping open the black king's defence. So the continuation was bringing in this rook for the attack. And after queen g6, black was defenceless. Cautionary's attacking resources was such that black could, could not cope with this position. So after this rook g3, in fact, black had resigned. I hope you enjoyed that game. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.